Well, and, and can I say, with all due respect to Connor, it's a good thing. It's a good thing because they are too classy a side to be out of Europe. You look at the quality they put out there. It was great. And Ulster, they just, we're talking Ulster about. we're talking about. They, we, Irish rugby needs them in Europe. As much as it's a good story mm -hmm. for Connacht to be there, it, we need Ulster in it because that's the powerhouse. But this should not paper over the, the blatant problems that there are in, in Ulster rugby. They've only got one team in the, in the rugby, in the uh, club competition, in the A, 1A and 1B. There's only one Ulster team in there. There's only four players going to the under-20s where Connacht are putting three into the, the national under-20s going to the World Championship. And that team could have been out of Europe. And that, that is real problems in Ulster. It has to be reviewed in an, a non-emotional way. It has to be looked at in What's a professional manner. What's holding that manner. review back? I mean, you were up there and things didn't end in, in the best possible fashion, whatever it was, 18 months ago. So people would say, Matt, you have an agenda, OK? But I mean, you're passionate about your rugby. You think it's being run badly in Ulster. Why? The administration of Ulster rugby is considerably behind the administration in Munster and in Leinster. And the decisions about how you get money how you spend the money and how you develop the game at the top, very top level. I'm not talking about the academies. You've got great guys like Johnny Bell, Niall, Niall Malone, working their heart out there and doing great work. Mm. The academy is run very, very well there. They're pumping some good kids through. That's not the issue. It's not the people on the ground. It's the making of the financial decisions and the administrative decisions to take the sport forward. Now, the sport has boomed. How, how does a financial decision impact on Ulster's mediocre performance this year? Oh, mate, the, the easiest one I've been banging on about because it's very hard to put all the information across the view. Mm. Peter Sharp, they go from the worst defensive record in 2008 to fifth, they jump halfway up, then you remove, because of finances, all the structures around what made that defensive effort great, where are they now? Second last. That is the type of decision that is holding it Taking back. Taking away a defensive coach. Exactly. Well, well, if you and there's a whole lot of others, but if you had got that and said, right, right let's, put, let's put Johnny Bell with that defensive coach, with Peter Sharp, teach him. So not only will Johnny Bell become a great asset for Ulster and Irish rugby, but Johnny can go and teach that to the, the academies. You get a system that's coming through, just like you have in Leinster and Munster. Instead, that was removed. The, the uh, information, the, the corporate knowledge was taken away from that team. And that's because of the decisions that have been made at the top level of the administration. And it, it ha I can say it now because I'm out. Mm. I'm allowed to say it. I'm not allowed to say it when you're there. you just got to cop it on the chin. The administration has to have a major review. It has to be done in a professional way, not an emotional way. And change has to occur for the clubs and the senior team to go on. Because they've got great supporters mm. and great young players. The third best supported team in the Magnus League. I, I, 